Okay, this video is going to go over the new tool that we're going to use with our cross section tool. When we cut cross sections, we'll be able to do something nice uh, um, and, and help out with uh, filling out our title blocks. So now I'll be able to, we'll be able to populate the route, the district, sheet number, county, job number, contract ID, project number, the bridge number. All this information can be populated by filling out a dialog as we uh, cut our cross sections. Also, a lot of districts use this uh, informational block in the bottom right. Some use them horizontally across here and some use uh, take use of this uh, consultant field and uh, place their informational block here. So that's what I did. I put an informational block out here and it's it's um, you, you can put whatever you want in here. So and I'm, I'm gonna go to the tool and show you how it works. So that's what the goals are. So the first thing I want to do is I'll go to my tasks go to my create cross section tool and pick my alignment. I'll wait a few seconds for the tool to populate. The next thing I want to do is I want to hit my preference and pick a preference that I'm going to use. For this project I'll just use a 10 scale. I'll load it and close. Okay, um, this tool supports anything that you do in the general custom tab. Anything that you want to set up. you got custom cross sections out there that you've been working with and stuff. You can still use it with this. I'm going to go with the defaults what it has, except I'm going to change my stop station to maybe uh, 10 plus 0. 0 so this doesn't run forever. So I'll do across 10. Next thing that you want to do after you get your general or your custom uh, sections figured out what you want to create cross sections with, we go down to the sheet folder or leaf and then go down to the annotation option. And what you'll see is if you loaded the MoDOT preference of your choice, you will get this information in here, a tag name and a value. Now, value is empty. If it's empty, if a value is empty, then nothing's going to populate in these fields. And you can see they represent that title block, the route, district, county, job number, contract ID. All that information is the same as the title block. So if you don't want to fill that out here, you can leave the value open and then uh, fill it out as many times that you need to in the sheet. Well, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to fill this out. So I'm going to... Um, select the route and when you do that it gives you this tag name down here at the bottom route and what that tag name is it's a it's looking for a tag name in the MoDOT border that we have so out there there's some um, data fields that require input and they have a tag associated to them so this tool will go out and find that tag and open up that data field and place that value inside there so I'm gonna give it a value I'll call this route 63 so 63 and when you do this you'll need to update So you update the field and you'll see the value now shows the 63 in there. The next option is the district. So I'm going to go ahead and type in Northeast District and update that field. So now on the title block I should see Route 63 and District where it's saying Northeast. Then the next one is County. So I'll populate the county and update. I'll hit the job number. I will update that information. I don't know the contract ID, project number, bridge number, so I'm going to leave those blank. <clears throat> the next part is the informational block. And I showed on that uh, Word document, that's this piece right here on the bottom right. So this last three entries deal with that, or actually five entries, but two that you'll have to fill out. And the first inf information I can do cross section sheets and update that that means that title is going to go out there in that information field one if I go to information field two I can call it whatever I want route 63 overlay overlay and white this field will hold up to 45 characters before you bleed out of that block so it'll go 45 characters through here before it ends up outside that that informational block area so once you have that information in there the sheet number total sheets and sheet of do not need to be touched because the sheet number will go out and use the tool and find out how many sheets are being placed and put that sheet number in the proper location for every title block every title sheet uh, the total sheets it calculates that as well, so it's using a function inside the, uh, the software to do this. 
The last one is sheet of, and that is the piece of text out there that shows you sheet blank of. Okay, so none, none of this rest of stuff has to be messed with. So once you get it to this point, you simply just apply. And we only did like uh, up to station 10 plus 00, zero so it shouldn't take too terribly long. My status bar in the bottom right tells me we're halfway there. And there we go. So I'm going to move this dialog out of the way for the time being. And I'm going to go into that first sheet. At the bottom right, you can see it put that piece of text in there that I defined. Cross section sheets, route 63. Overlay and widening, sheet 1 of 5. I go up to sheet number 5. Let's do 5. Zoom into that. And it tells me 5 of 5. So that's accurate and that's working. The other part was the title block. If we zoom into the title block, there's my route my northeast district, my sheet number, this is sheet number four in the whole set of sheets, the county and job number are placed as well. The beauty about it is that you don't have to go out and figure out what color style and weight to use. It, it already has it set up in the data field, the data field before you place it. So that's uh, that's pretty much how you get it to place in each sheet. Now if you don't want to see the informational block at the bottom, just like I was trying to explain before, what you could do is you can come in here and say that information one I don't want to see that so I can just delete that out and update it. Information two is the same way and update the sheet number so all I'm doing is just taking a few seconds here and removing the piece of information out of here and then update. Now if I run them because I know I want my title sheet stuff and that, that is that's a big help but if I don't want to see that informational block I can just remove it. Now if I apply it, we'll go out and look at the new sheets and see that the informational block at the bottom right has been removed. Okay, so if I go into it and look, there's nothing in that space anymore. So everything else filled out, my title sheet, my title block, <clears throat> but the informational block's gone. So that's basically how the this tool works. All you'll need to do is come in here when you create your cross sections the next time and fill out the annotation. <clears throat> now another nice little thing to it is that when you leave the dialog or close out it'll prompt you to save it if you haven't saved it. And if you do save it, <clears throat> what you want to do is save it out to your project wise data folder. Okay? Um, you won't be able to save it to the T drive so that would be your other option to save it out to your uh, project wise folder. And then if something goes wrong with your cross sections and you know they're not dynamic by any means so if something changes your project and you have to run cross sections again at least you'll have this file which is a DAT file, a DAT file that you'll be able to load back up and run and it'll have all this information filled out that you filled out once before. It's not a lot but at least uh, you can do that and you can save that. So that's one. That's another big thing is saving out that DAT file if you want to. Um, the last thing to talk about is uh, uh, sometimes you go over that 50 sheet mark where the make PDF request tool can only do up to 50 and, and what you'd have to do is you create them all in this file the single model you run all your sheets and if you got 75 sheets you got 75 sheets but then what you'd want to do is save the file as a separate DGN file and you'd have both those models now both the models will be the same they both have 75 sheets, but so what you'll have to do is go into the model, the cross-section model, and number one, the cross-section file number one, delete the last 25 sheets and the geometry that goes along with it. All right, and go into the cross-section sheet number two, open up the model, and delete the first 50 sheets. So I'll have a workflow document out there. I have one already on the operation of this tool, um, but I'll try to get one out there for the, the 50 or so that we can make the, the make PDF request tool not be so cumbersome. And that's all I got.